in your presence. Hold the beauty of your face. Oh!
Hallelujah. I will be whole right here in your presence. We thank the Lord for another day. And we welcome all of our YouTube and Facebook viewers. Thank you for tuning in to Dove Church today. We bless you and thank God for you. And we just bless his name today because he is good. And we're in a period of just heightened thanksgiving, what I call sensitivity, because we have so much to be thankful for. So with that, we're going to move fastly into our word for this time. And if you will join us by saying our confession, hold your Bibles up or your phone or wherever your, your scripture is. And repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity to share from this sacred desk the word that you've given us and moved into our heart. Holy Spirit, take us to where we need to be. Help us to speak forth the mind of God in this hour, in this time. And God, we thank you for what's freely given to us from the Holy Spirit. And now, Lord, let the word of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in my, thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. And we're going to talk from the subject today, having a thankful attitude. Having a thankful attitude. Having a thankful attitude. During this time, I am thankful to God for so many things. My sister Lindy and her husband, my brother-in-law, Tim, both contracted the COVID virus, but praise be to God. Both are home out of intensive care and the rehab or rehabilitation facility. We prayed and fasted because one other time when we ministered, we talk about them having COVID and being in intensive care. But now we can talk about the victory and that's that they're out of the hospital, out of intensive care and testing negative, and they're all right and coming around. We prayed and fasted and believed God and believed we would see that day, and we did. And I want to tell everybody that here's this message, prayer works. Just pray. Amen. Along with them, a number of our church family who were affected by the virus have returned home and, and, and recuperated from the virus and are testing negative. I've learned to be thankful to God for everything, great or small. I am thankful for my wife, my children, grandchildren, and our extended family, my godchildren, and friends. We are thankful for Dove Church and its partnering with us in seeing ministry go forward. 
The thing that is a, a, a certainty and I am ever thankful for is that God reigns. He still reigns. He, his name is far above every name that is named in the earth. I don't care when it shows up. His name is above every name. How many know I'm right? God reigns. Amen. And so with that, while we just celebrated Thanksgiving as a day, I believe Thanksgiving is an ongoing, never-ending season. My life is a season of Thanksgiving. Thankful all the time. Because every time I look around, he's doing something different and giving me another reason to say thank you. So Thanksgiving is a never-ending season. I thank him for good night's rest. I thank him for, for some time when I'm troubled that I, I, I can go to him and talk to him and, 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 and it brings a certain release and a certain resolve. It doesn't always go away immediately, but I know help is on the way. So I thank him for the help that I'm about to receive. How many of you know I'm right about that? How many of you know if you tell the truth, everything don't go away right away? But, 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 but after a while, you're better. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, Thanksgiving is an attitude of gratitude. It's an attitude of gratitude. So a thankful season is a season of gratitude. Thanksgiving is an attitude of gratitude. And the reason why it's important to talk about giving thanks is because some people never give thanks. Not really. They're not thankful. They're entitled, but they're not thankful. I'm supposed to get it. But that's not the way it works. What is gratitude? First of all, it's a noun. It's a person, place, or thing. It's a thing. It's a noun. Gratitude. What is gratitude? Here is here's just a quick definition. It's the quality of being thankful. The quality of being thankful or full of thanks. And here is the next thing that when you are thankful, the next part of the definition swings in to say readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Everybody say gratitude. gratitude. Let's turn to what I think is a, a, a good scripture on thankfulness and gratitude and how it operates and what it does for your life. Philippians 4. 6 through 7. New King James Version. And it says there, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now we're going to unpack that whole, those whole two verses. Because there's some good stuff in there. And you need to get this down. Get this in. As, as you, you are, are experiencing, are walking in a season of thanksgiving. I want to read that same, those same two verses from Philippians 4 in the Passion Translation. And it says, let gentleness be seen in every relationship. For our Lord is ever near. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing, 
Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends, transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. That's good. This scripture illustrates how a thankful person exhibits the fruits of gratitude. Let's unpack it. Be anxious for nothing. This is a man, not an option. Undue care or overwrought care. You care too much until it sends you into worry and doubt. And that's what happens during this COVID thing. Is that we go into undue worry and doubt. I'm not telling you not be cautious, not be safe, but undo worry. Undo worry carries physical manifestations for you, not only spiritual ones. It says you don't trust in any direction, and you must trust. Undo care and undo uh, 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 concern and doubt is an intrusion in the arena that belongs to God alone. All of that belongs to God. Lay all your cares on me because I care for you. It's God's stuff. It's God's business. It's God's realm. It makes us the father of our own situations instead of being the children. Then, then the next part says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. Paul wrote that everything is a proper subject of prayer. Everything. But, every, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. Everything is a subject of prayer. Everything is worthy of prayer. Everything needs to be submitted in prayer. Everything. And we have a tendency to bring some things to God when it gets to, to a hyperstatic level, but some things we just try to handle on our own. But everything is a subject for prayer. I'm going to get crazy with it. Even when you're dressing in the morning, you ought to get crazy and say, God, what should I put on? What should I wear? It has happened to me. I've gone in the closet, I was going to wear one thing, and some said, no, don't wear that. Well, uh, one something was, is that I was going to wear a white sweater, and I heard Marcus say, don't wear that. <laughs> so sometimes it's not the, always the Lord, but it's, it's your, your cameraman. <laughs> so I didn't wear. But if I can hearken to that, I can hearken to the voice of the Lord that, 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 that he's interested in every little bitty thing about you. Even the stuff you hold back in the back room and don't want to tell him. He's interested in it. Amen. So go in there, pull all of it out, pray about it. Pray about everything and worry about nothing. Prayer and supplication. Let's, let's, let's hit that. These two aspects of prayer are similar but distinct. Prayer is a broader word which means all of our communications with God. Prayer, broad. All of our communications with God can be lumped into the category of praying. And another aspect of praying is worship. It's praying too. Because in order to get into God's presence with your prayer, you have to acknowledge who he is. That's why I can't pray a prayer that doesn't acknowledge who I'm going in to see. My prayer is the stamp to my request. It gets it moving. So when I go to places and they don't want me to pray in certain names and stuff because it's not politically correct, I am not politically correct when it comes to praying. Amen. Amen. 
I pray to God in his son's name. And his son's name is Jesus. That gets the ball to rolling. Jesus. The next thing is supplication. Supplication means to directly ask God to do something. Directly ask God to do something. It's specific requests. Sometimes we pray scattergun praying. Lord bless me all the time everywhere all through the day, amen. When you really need him to specifically do something, supplicate, make a specific request. If you need your bill paid, pray for that. Call it done. Leave you receive it at the moment you pray. Are you out there? Many of our prayers go unanswered because we do not ask God for anything. You say, no, that's not true. I do ask. No, he's talking about specific stuff. Ask him. Ask him to cover your, 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 your doubt. Everything is worth praying about. My shortcomings, everything is worth praying about. If my business isn't moving, Lord, show me what it is or who it is that needs to get move, moving and, and what needs to work. Even if that person, when he shows it to you, you see your face show up. You need to pray about it. Pray about relationship. If you're married, you pray over your spouse. If they're sick, you pray, you pray over them. I've been praying over Pastor Marcy about some issues she, she's been having. And I just, you know, I just, I said, okay, Lord, we, 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 you, you're going to have to figure this out. I'm asking you to do this. You got the answer. I don't have the answer, but I'm praying specifically for an answer to this. Are, are you all out there? Yeah. And it said, here... Specific requests mean God invites us simply to let your requests be made known. And it's not because he don't know them, but it needs to move out of your mouth. I don't believe in silent praying. Not really. I believe that when you express something, it moves the environment. Say something. Nothing happens till something is so you need to say something. Now you can mumble a prayer quietly to yourself or if it's a situation. Just, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying, when you do pray, pray out loud. And if you stuff, you don't want anybody to hear, go in a room, lock the door, lock the bathroom door, lock it in, and, and pray. But you need to express it. He wants to know. It's not that he does not know. The issue is your words in faith allows him access or license into your life. You must give God license to come in and answer your prayer. He knows, but how does he get there? Because you invite him in. God, in Jesus' name, I need you to do this. There's times when you cannot pray for the whole world. There's other times when you intercede for the whole world. But there's a time that's specifically designated to pray for some specific uh, 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 request. You need to get in the habit of doing that. Just outline it. Here it is, God. And while you're praying it, believe it. See, people are so used to saying religious stuff. The most shocking thing I do with people is, is when they ask me to pray for them, I stop right then and there and pray. I don't tell them, 
We'll be praying for you. That's so religious. I'm, 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 I'm holding a high thought. Tell people don't hold no high thought for you. Our thoughts are with you. That's not exactly bad. But say thoughts and prayers. As I think about what you're going through, my prayers are with you. My open mouth prayer. Bless Emily. Bless Chris. And if I know a situation, bless that. Deliver that. Or in some cases, I get a little more deliberate and a little more commanding. And I, whatever that thing, that thing has a name. And if that name is with that person, I tell that thing to go from that person. We have that power. This brings about answered prayer. You want your prayers answered? Say it out loud. Don't just assume, God, you know. You made me and you know all about me. Yeah, he, yeah, 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 yeah. He know all about all that. But he gave you a mouth. Open it and say something. Amen? Amen. How many know I'm right about that? How many know if it gets tight enough, you open your mouth and scream out some stuff? Come on, come on. How many of you have ever just hollered out at God? It's it been that time. Okay, God, I have had enough. <laughs> I can't stand any more of this. I want this. You get specific then. I want this to be gone. Amen. Yeah. But then there's another scripture that was, that was wonderful. In, in my research, I just ran across, and I said, oh, man, is this good. Proverbs 18 and 20. New King James Version. Proverbs 18 and 20. And it tells us what happens when we make supplications, specific requests to God. I'm going to tell you the, how it affects your whole being. And it says there, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. Stop. You mean your mouth determines your fulfillment? Yes. I don't even like quiet kids. Open your mouth and say something. Act like you got a thought going on. Don't let people dummy you up. No, I'm, I'm ashamed. I ain't say. Open your mouth. They ask you something. Yes, yeah, such and such and such. I'd rather have you brash and opening your mouth and saying something than, than like you don't have a, uh, you, you, you're, not, you're not thinking. I like, I know y'all may think I'm crazy. They cry, but I like talkative babies. <laughs> like that. They back there now. And, 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 and sometimes my, 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 my granddaughter twin, she talks a lot more than the boy. He'll talk when he feels like talking, but he smiles a lot. So he's thinking about talking. But they have a good time. And sometimes, believe it or not, they talk to each other. But Bella, sometimes, I, I, I told her I know how to talk well. And I tell her, I love you. And I declare one time, it sounded like she repeated me. And she said, woo. And I said, woo, I'm scared of you. So I. <laughs> but I like it when they talk to me because Lou was talkative as a baby. Till people would say, don't leave me in the car with that talking boy. And he talked. He would get on the plane talking to people. I like it because he, he processes. He says stuff out loud. He's talk I think Joshua was a talkative kid. Wasn't he talking? Yeah, he's talking. He's still talking. <laughs> if you notice, nobody's exempt today. Let me get back to this scripture. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his what? Mouth. Whose mouth? His mouth? 
your mouth. You want to get full? Say something out of your mouth. You want to be complete? Say something. You want victory? Say something. You want to be successful? Say something. You want your, 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 your mysterious project that you want to make you some money? Say something. You want your career to take off? Say something. It's the fruit of your mouth. And then, after the semicolon, it says, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Come on. That means your productive speaking shall cause you to be filled. What does field mean? No room for anything else. Bank field. Does that help? You, somebody said, I like that. Your needs met. It's not a question of whether you can do it. It's just give me time to write the check. Field. Field. Write this down. Specific request brings specific results. With thanksgiving. Here comes the gratitude part. It's all done with thanksgiving. What does thanksgiving do? It guards against a whining, complaining spirit before God. It guards against it. I'm thankful. You only gave me a hundred and somebody else got five thousand. That's whining. I'm thankful. And if you be thankful over a hundred, it'll manifest into a satisfied fulfillment. We really can be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious. Because when you're anxious, when you're anxious, it has a tendency to jump start or, or, or have a false start. There are runners in the Olympic that 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 they only allow so many false starts and then they're disqualified. False starts mean before the gun is shot, you take off. That's because you're anxious. And sometimes we get canceled because of false starts. You jump off before you hear the goal. Before you hear the bell. And you jump off into self in front of God. God said, I didn't tell you to move yet. Some of us are, 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 are reaping the benefits of false starts right now. Stuff we didn't, God never approved of. Okay. Thanksgiving in demonstration is gratitude. Make gratitude a part of your interaction with other people. Gratitude should imp imp impact in two areas. Your relationship with God and your relationship with people. And, 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 and Rick Warren says this. He says this. To appreciate means... To raise in value. God, that's good. When I appreciate you, I raise your value. When I'm thankful to Helene, I've raised her value in my life. And hers. You're valuable to me. Wow. 
I appreciate Marcella. So I've and, and her work in ministry in this house. So so my appreciation and gratitude raises her value. It makes her more valuable. To be thankful for somebody is to raise their value and make them feel more valuable. Make them feel needed. Make them feel like I'm worth something to pastor. And you are. Many Sundays I leave out and I turn to the band and I say, thank you guys. Because I appreciate them and my intent is to raise their value. Yeah. To let them know, okay, you, you're with us, but I'm glad you're here because you could be somewhere else. Yeah. They better not be, but they could be. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, Every now and then, you have to let people know that, that you appreciate what they're doing. Sometimes we appreciate our pets more than we do people. Fido get more love than people do. You take them to the vet, buy them the best food, and do people like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, y'all help me. Then Rick Warren goes on to say, that's not only true of things, it's true of people. When you appreciate somebody, you literally raise their value. We ought to appreciate people because it increases their self-worth. It increases your self-worth. And if enough people tell you, you all right, after a while, your head gets checked. It shouldn't get the big head. It, it checks you and say, okay, I, I, I think I do that halfway decent. Amen. Make it a regular practice to say thank you to people in your life. Often the people we express gratitude with the least in our life are those the closest to us. Sometimes the people closest to us we take for granted. It's easy to take pastor for granted. He's always there. He's going to be there when I show but what if I took six months off? And didn't call, didn't say. But you come in and on this pulpit would be a note. And I'm going to borrow it from the mouth. See you real soon. Does that make sense? Because things that's the closest to us, we can take for granted. And then when they're missing, that's when we realize, oh my God. Who's going to do this? I'll never forget when my grandparents moved off of the earth and, and moved into the presence of the Lord. That there were certain things my grandmother could cook. To everybody say, who's going to cook that now? But sometimes she would make it, we would want fast food and didn't want her food. And she'd cook it and, and we didn't appreciate it. But now, golly, I sure wish she would make that sweet potato pie. I, I, I wish she would do such and such. I wish, but she's not here. Because you don't appreciate them when they're up close to you. And when they're gone, that's when you realize, because there's a void that you took for granted because it was always there. Don't take things and people for granted. To walk up to people, tell them, thank you, I appreciate you. Lou, tell daddy, I appreciate you. <laughs> he knew I was going to say something. But he does. Sometimes he comes and lays a big old sloppy wet kiss on the top of my head and I say, oh. But I appreciate it. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're close to people, tell them you love them, let them know. They, there should not be a day that they don't feel like they're getting some love from you. Well, I, I ain't that kind of person. I, you know, I just don't say, I'll show you, I love you. I don't say, open your mouth and say something. Because if you're in pain, you tell them, I'm hurting. <laughs> tell them you love them. And mean it. I love you. All right. Lean into the strength gratitude provides. People who have been through extremely tough situations are those who are the most grateful. These persons having seen God show the most perseverance. These persons who have, 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 have seen God work, they show the most perseverance. People that have come up through, like, 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 it's like the people who came up through, through the times in this country where there was less and less and less, or, or Holocaust victims were extremely grateful because they were tested. Some of the greatest Christians have come out of the greatest stress. They've been pushed, so they're grateful. They're grateful for everything. They're not entitled, I'm just grateful. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Thanksgiving is a superpower. It enables us to see past our experiences and embrace how God is moving. Not only are we thankful people able to draw strength from gratitude, but they're also able to empower others with their perspective as well. When you are thankful, you can empower other people through your gratitude. Givers make other people want to give. But you don't know that if you're not a giver. <laughs> oh, Lord. Paul, and I'm almost done, he was thankful for the recipients of each letter that he sent to them. He wrote it to help them, but he was thankful for it. Let, let, let's do a, a short run through. Throughout the New Testament, there are many references of Paul giving thanks. Paul often gave thanks for and on behalf of his compa companions and the churches to whom he wrote letters. For example, Paul gave thanks for the Romans' faith, which was heard throughout the whole world. Romans 1 and 8. He thanked them because what they were doing is what he had taught them and it was reaching the world. I thank you for, for, for following the teaching. Isn't that good? For the Philippians, Paul thanked God upon every remembrance of them. Not only for their offering, but for what they did for his ministry. And he wrote a letter. And in 2020... I'm reading Paul's thank you to the churches. Wow. In Philippians 1 and 2, 1 and 3, the Thessalonians received the word of God as divine rather than man-made. Paul thanked them for receiving spiritual food. Come on, somebody. I thank you, Dove, when you receive spiritual stuff from your father. I thank you. I thank you when you honor the teaching of the house. Thank you. I thank you when you have ears to hear the gospel. Thank you. I don't take it for granted. Their faith grew exceedingly and love toward one another abounded. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 3. He thanked them for demonstrating God through their love. Thank you for doing that. Philippi, Church of Philippi, thank you for demonstrating that. When you rake the leaves from around the church, thank you. Whew, my God, my God. 
Paul understood the importance of praying for others. It was in these prayers that he gave thanks for those people and the Lord's work in their life. How often do we pray for others? How often do we give thanks for them or what the Lord is doing in them? Thank you for being faithful. Then he goes on to say, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When you are thankful, you, you invite the peace of God to come in and guard your heart and your mind. When you are thankful, you set up a guard on your heart and mind. You don't go crazy. You don't lose your mind. You are steadfast. You are not anxious for anything. But you know that through your thanksgiving, you have set up a guard to keep your heart and your mind. The reason why you didn't lose your mind is because you were thankful to God and he kept your mind. The reason why you didn't drop out is because you were thankful and God kept you. And this thanksgiving surpasses all understanding because it's out of this world. How can I still be thankful after everything I've been through? Because God has set a guard over my thoughts. In my mind. Walter Hawkins wrote a song. And I'm done. He said tragedies are commonplace. All kind of diseases. People are slipping away. Economy's down. People can't get enough pay. But as for me. All I can say is. Thank you Lord. For all you've done. For me. Folks without homes living out on the street. And the drug habits some say. They just can't be. Muggers and robbers. No place seems to be safe. But you've been my protection. Every step of the way. And because of that, all I can say is, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've done for me. Outdoors, thank you. No food, thank you. No clothes, thank you. Or left alone, thank you. Without a friend, thank you. Or just another number in the crowd, thank you. With a tragic end, thank you. But you didn't see the fit to let none of these things come on me. So all I can do is say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> For all you've done. For all you've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't say it for you. For all you've done. For me. I should have been dead. Thank you. Sleeping in my grave. Thank you. But you've been my protection. Every step of the way. For all you've done for me. Anybody in this room, thank you. Throw up the moms and tell God I thank you. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Blessings to you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you.
kept me every step of the way. All you've done for me. As for me, bless you today. This message has been a blessing to you. Write us, let us know. Dove Church, Detroit. At the end of this session, this media outreach will, will be supplied to you good information about how to reach us, how to give into the ministry. We thank you for tuning in today. We're blessed and we say thank you. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can repeat after me. Invite him in. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of my sin. And today, Jesus, I accept you into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. To the glory of God. I believe in a miracle. One day you died on the cross. That third day morning you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, I am saved. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, find a good church. If you're in the Detroit area, we're at 4660 Military at the corner of a ratio near Livernois and Michigan Avenues. Come and see us. We're having live services. 4660 Military and a ratio. God bless you. We love you.
what a good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you. Thank you, Lord. We encourage your financial support of this ministry. Dove Church is good ground. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at Dove Church slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.